Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. Welcome. Bienvenue to JCB Live Happy Hour. Tonight, we are in the heart of Napa Valley, but we will be traveling from the old world of Fabulous Island to Pennsylvania, where America started, all the way to Silicon Valley and eventually on the hills of the beautiful Napa Valley. We're having a fabulous couple, fascinating by the background, inspiring by their life and phenomenal by what they've done and what they are doing. In spite of all that, they created magic. They have two kids who are lovely and they join the fantastic Napa Valley world after a very successful career at Apple and many other phenomenal computer companies. So I'm very excited to welcome them in Napa. I've met them many years ago. They did not own yet the winery that you see here, Brent. They bought it 24 months ago. They already created magic. I'm delighted for you to meet them as they're the new tycoons of the Pritchard Hills of Napa Valley. And you'll see why I'm bringing number 69 because Christine is so charming <laughs> that even JCB is surprised and excited by the emotion of seeing the both of them on JCB Live. Christine and Jim, welcome. Thank you. Voila. Merci. Voila, voila. Merci welcome to Napa Valley. Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. So exciting. It is exciting. Thanks. We're so, dear friends from a dream in the house on Wapo Hill, we were laying on the purple couch <laughs> and Christine and Jim were telling me they had a dream to buy a wine estate. It happened. How did that happen? Like all good things in life, opportunity presented itself. And we found ourselves driving up a hill. And, and I want you to and also you did, contribute you did not want to, to be on a hill. I did not want to be on the hill. <laughs> I'm like, I want to be on the valley floor. We drove up the hill and we were greeted at this beautiful estate um by the previous owners ebb and dead fits and they invited us to lunch we walked through the tasting room and it was a bit like my first date with jim i kind of went hmm some potential here <laughs> um we went to the cave and had lunch and i went all the right moves Ooh. and we tasted wine for the first time that was made on the estate I looked through the glass doors, through into the cave and looked at all the beautiful French barrels. And I looked at my husband and I said, I think we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had made the decision. I, I certainly had. I don't know about, about you. Well, you know, we were pretty picky. We looked for a long time and we kissed a lot of frogs, so to speak, you know, uh, you mean French frogs like me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sitting while we go to kiss. <laughs> We're kissing a French frog. <laughs> yes, like you. <laughs> um, but you know, another thing is we've known Anne and Joe Colgan for many, many years, and to be their neighbors was just, you know, a privilege and honor. And some of our favorite wines were in that neighborhood. So the opportunity to be amongst some of those great neighbors was yeah. really, you know, just a dream for us. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about dreams. How does a beautiful Irish child from the beautiful areas of one of the most phenomenal country on the planet, the best French of the French against the English that we're very proud of, uh -huh. meets a wonderful, charming man where America started? When was the electric moment? Because we got it for Brent. Now, what about for both of you? I'm going to let Jim maybe answer this because I'm starting to think alcohol has played a big role in many of her life events. <laughs> so well, I, Jim's <laughs> last name, just to let you know, is Jim B. <laughs> so maybe there's a little bit to that. But it's actually a great story. Um, and we both have two sides to the story. Um, I believe my side to be a little more romantic. Um, <laughs> but I came to the US in the uh, in the mid 90s and I came to to spend two years here. I had uh, an opportunity that I wanted to, you know, take advantage of. And as I came to to California or as I refer to is America, um, because I felt this was 
everything that I expected from from the U.S. Um, I worked at a company that within a short period of time realized that it wasn't the place I wanted to be. I had worked at Apple previously and uh, those people knew that I was here and they offered me a job. And that was prior to Steve coming back to Apple. As he came back to Apple, I chose, you know, this could be a good exodus point for me because I'm sure he's going to bring all his own team in. And I met a friend on a Sunday afternoon and my there was one agenda and the agenda was I'm tired of American men with respect to American men because there's many <laughs> wonderful American men at that point in time with the data that I had, I was tired of American men. Um, and by the way, Jean Charles and I met way before I ever met Jim. So I had met some European men, which were, you know, which were certainly interesting men. Um, but anyway, long story short, I met her. I said, I need to move back to, to Europe. And there was three people in the bar. It was a Sunday afternoon. And there was two gentlemen who were very well inebriated and Jim. <laughs> who was not <laughs> and the moment I sat down one of the inebriated gentlemen came my way and said his opening line was a woman like you and I looked at my friend and I said and there lies an example of why I'm going to leave the US because there is no such thing as a woman like me he doesn't know who I am so he felt that I should know somebody of Jim's caliber and said but you really should know him because he's a director at Apple and my response was, well, who isn't? Because so was I. And uh, then I leave it to Jim and turn myself. Love at first sight, I feel, <laughs> as we're drinking 69. This is so appropriate. Or not. <laughs> well, we can all watch you. Know. <laughs> that just about sums it up. Yeah. yeah. Right, That's was, exciting because- I made the cut. John Scholl, so well, I don't, I don't know what I did, but I, I made And a, many tried and you cut. did it. And many tried. So, yeah. so you've mentioned before an Irish wedding. Would you please elaborate on that? Because this is a great line. What does that mean? An Irish wedding is basically the biggest party you could imagine that doesn't stop going. And so it was interesting because we got married in Napa. Yeah. And, oh. And you can't, you know, do things beyond certain times and so we had to you know very stealthily seek out places where you know we could just you know keep going and going and going and going and uh so we, we had an amazing wedding at the um at the culinary institute and so your first acquaintance not your first but big acquaintance to culinary institute food wine yeah. and the fire brigade came twice <laughs> so that was considered to be on par with a good Irish wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you continued at Apple for a while mm -hmm. and, and then you had a place up here in the wine country and then you decided this is what we want to do. So how do you make such decision? Because I think for all of us living the time we live in, mm -hmm. it's not easy to make big decisions. And yeah. sometimes we you know, could be eventually shy of it. Mm -hmm. And what made that big mm -hmm. thing to happen for you? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. You know, Please. we were, Christine being from Ireland and I was from the East Coast and, you know, we were both new to California. So we said, you know, we're, where do we want to spend, you know, our time away from work? And not that Silicon Valley is the most stressful place on the planet, but, you know, we, we wanted a place to get away to. And we visited it. California has many amazing places. Napa just felt right for us. And um, it, you know, it was a place we escaped to. It was a place where once we got on Highway 29, our heart rate just yeah. went down and wow. we could relax. And yeah. um, we eventually rented an old farmhouse in Calistoga, you know, when our kids were young and then our kids loved it. We said, let's buy a house not too far from, from here. And then our first vineyard, and the rest uh is and your great. first vineyards is in Salina. in Salina. Right. Yeah. yeah yeah off stice lane right or oh, very close very close yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. can you believe we are neighbors as well <laughs> stice lane bartolucci <laughs> vineyards that's incredible meant yeah. to happen meant yeah. to happen and then so that vineyard so you became a farmer to Correct. start with yeah and you were selling your grapes and then you said well 
what about if we start to make wine and we go beyond? Right. Yeah. And I think for you to to really progress in the world that we're in today. Yeah. Um, I think we decided to do it very thoughtfully and do it um, mindfully in a way of let's just let's just try. We're, we're people who like to, you know, we, we're risk takers, but we also like to try things and go. You know, if it, if we can't make it work, it, it was worth a try. Um, but we we had a lot of great people helping us. Yes, we did. You know, we had a, a great support system yeah. of people, and you know, as you know, to be to make great wine, you have to have great land and terroir and and farming practices and and so we we learned that early yeah. on and so when it came time to make the next step we yeah we had you know years of learning that under our belt and i don't know if you all all our friend viewers right now can feel the great energy i'm next to them <laughs> i feel the great complicity complicity <laughs> so how is it to be Husband and wife, how many years now together married? We're married 19 years. 19 years, two kids. Yeah, two Ten. wonderful children. We have a son who is 18. He's a freshman in at college. a virtual college right now. <laughs> um, and we have a daughter who's 16, soon to be 17. That's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Well, yeah. and it's exciting. So how is it to have a business together? Because you were working with the same company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm but maybe not in the same department, mm -hmm. right? So how is it now for all our friends who have business with their wife or husband, a significant other? Tell us. I'm still, <laughs> Joe Shows, I'm still alive. <laughs> and well alive, I can tell. You know, there's there's a really fun part. It's, it's, no, it's no secret between Jim and I that, you know, I was a little reticent to hop back into, you know, working yeah. side by side. Um, but as soon as I, I realized sort of when we found the place yes. and it was really important to me to have a sense of place. And that's what mm -hmm. we found at Brand. It's just a beautiful estate, 110 acres on, you know, the top of Pritchard Hill. So I felt the place was right. That's and I it. knew that once the place spoke to us and sort of had the bones of what we wanted the rest was going to be easy that's it that was in 2019. yeah <laughs> and it, yeah but it's it's a very good point you know the place the anchor yeah the sense of terroir yeah. as we call it with your passion and yeah. vision that you could add to it makes it very different yeah makes it achievable yes because 110 acres, dear friends, is a lot of land. It's a big estate. It is. You know. And for us, I think we, you know, we've hit a couple of bumps in the road because we both came to the table like we did when we were at Apple. So two alpha dogs came to the table and depending on how the conversation went, two left or one left. <laughs> <laughs> so we weren't exactly sure. Um, and But I, 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 I say it in jest, but there's a very serious element to this where we held ourselves very accountable to say, look, if if we don't survive through this and if we're not successful and we're not happy doing this, then what's the point? We've That's lost right. the plot. So we've checked ourselves. We've taken ourselves away from the table for a while. We've created a little cadence around not working seven days a week because mm -hmm. when you buy your own business, when you're you know, running an estate like ours, as you well know, because you've done this um with your family for a long time um you work a lot and uh, i think we're getting better yeah. and um i can't say it'll ever be perfect but we're we don't want it to be perfect i think they both look much younger <laughs> two years later so wine let's let's toast with your beautiful proprietary red blend thank you right cheers wine makes you younger and more vibrant and more luminous and we could see that because last time we went to bed at 3 a.m. It was a few years ago. <laughs> and I could tell you, you look fresher, brighter, and enlightened. So how does enlightenment come to you, Christine? You know, the same feeling we had when we drove on Highway 29 many, many years ago, and going from Silicon Valley to the Napa Valley, it feels the same way today. Mm. There's something beautiful about nature here. And there's something beautiful, especially where our estate is to, you know, we wake up and we're above the cloud line. Yes. And you realize there's something greater than who you are and there's something really beautiful and you just wonder what's the day going to bring. Leave all the challenges yeah. of the world aside today. Um, so for us, 
I think we're truly loving learning about our business. We learn something every day. Yes. And um, I think we're, I personally am very grateful and I am thrilled to, to just continue on this journey of learning and, it, and now being, you know, by my husband's side. It's amazing. So you go to bed on cloud nine. Yes. <laughs> you know, which when and I your wake husband, up above the clouds. And you're above them. Hey, you're going to tell us. Who can say that? <laughs> Who can say that? <laughs> Only at bread. So yeah. tell us about what we're drinking because this is obviously a fabulous yeah. red blend. Yeah. Yeah. And we on Pritchard Hill, which is that magnificent hillside that dominates the entire valley on top of Lake Beerus on one side. And obviously you dominate the whole middle of the Napa Valley. This is breathtaking. Yeah. So, yeah. so what we're, this is our estate blend. We call it Brio. Um, just a little history of brand. So Philippe Melka has been our winemaker since 2009, since the beginning, he picked all of the clones and rootstocks for the estate and he envisioned making originally one wine, a Bordeaux blend. Yeah. But over time, he and the original proprietors learned that we were very, getting very different, distinguished, you know, um, wines from the three different vineyards. So today we make three different wines and Brio is our estate blend. Yeah. It's 80% Cabernet Sauvignon, 15% Cab Franc and 5% Petit Verdot. Hmm. And this is blended in a, in a style that's very approachable. Mm -hmm. So, you pop the cork and you don't have to decant it. We want it to be very approachable, but we want you to get the essence of what our estate is about and the terroir on Pritchard Hill. So it has structure and yeah. elegance, but it's also very approachable and drinkable, really. So um, this is Brio. Oh, fabulous. And, and as... Um, Sante. Sante. <laughs> so what do the Irish say? Slointe. Slowly. Which is to your health. To your health. It also means goodbye. It's a bit like French. It has multiple meanings. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. depending on the intonation, yeah, exactly. you say goodbye to bar, goodbye. you say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. Exactly. Only the Irish. We love them. Yes. So, as we talk wine, what, what inspires, I'm looking at you, Christine. Mm -hmm. Great English family, Irish family. Your mother said, I raise you so I can send you away. Mm -hmm. Would you elaborate on that? Mm -hmm. Because I think it's, it's um, so different mm -hmm. in many ways than the European mm -hmm. mentality mm -hmm. where mother keeps children close yeah. by and yeah. you don't live far away from the household. Yeah. So. yeah. You know, she was, um, my mom passed away um, about 20 years ago, but she was a remarkable lady. You know, I come from a very small island. You can drive from one end of it to the other in a day. Um, you know, about three million people when I lived there. And she came from very humble beginnings. She came from a very big family and she really believed that uh, for you to follow your dreams, yeah. um, she should never get in the way. So what she taught me was to, you know, to go, go explore, go yeah. figure out what you want to do. And if you come back, fantastic. And if you don't, we'll come to you. That's because amazing. she also was not one of, um, you know, wanting to just stay home. And, and, and uh, so for me, it inspired me to, to, to learn, to go, to go, mm -hmm. to explore, to explore and go figure out what's out there. Because I think for you to learn, you have to be open that there are other ways of life. Yeah. Not not just yours. And um, for me, it has been incredibly satisfying because I've spent a few years in Asia. I've spent, you know, many years in Europe. I've spent, you know, a good portion of my life now in the US. And they've all been different experiences. And they're the fantastic part for me was I knew when I wanted to find my partner here, it was really important for me to find somebody yeah. who had that level of interest and wanting to explore with me because through that we just have we have a lot of fun we still have to figure out when we're going to have all that fun because we just <laughs> seem to be working all the time but when we but do it's not though, working it's great. <laughs> exactly so well that's inspiring. very inspiring thank you for 
gave us a lot of things to think yeah. about here. Yeah. And by the way, how is it to be raised with three brothers? Because um, you're the little one after three yes, brothers. Yes, I, 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 I am the only daughter. I'm the son my dad never had. <laughs> I think I said that at my wedding and my brothers had a real problem I think, with I that. I think your dad said that at your wedding. <laughs> um, and, you know, so two of my brothers are actually still in Ireland and, uh, and one is here. And um, we're very, you know, we're a close family. Mm -hmm. We're not that far, just like you. Yeah. You go to France a lot. I go to Ireland a lot. Yes. Um, unfortunately, you know, currently they can't come here, but we do the best we can. We're not a huge family, but we do our best to see yeah. each other. Around. Well, and on that note, that's what struck me when we first met. Very close family yeah. tie, which is very similar to us. And, and often in the US, you know, children have to go. They go to college and then that's the signal that the bedroom right. is not anymore the family home. They've yeah. converted it. And, yeah. and it's sad. Yeah. So give us your definition of what family is. Um, well, it's, it's, always... it's even so much more important, I think, today, right, than it was six months ago in, in, many, in yeah. many instances. I will tell you a story and maybe indirectly answer this because this is something that just happened recently. We have two beautiful children. We have a son who's um, he's an elite athlete. He's going to go play lacrosse at a division one level on the East Coast. Wow. And he unfortunately couldn't go because of um, COVID. So I thought he's had disappointment after disappointment. How can I make something really, really yeah. beautiful for him? Good. Very, very so good. he went away during an afternoon and I had all of this paraphernalia from his university, his duvet cover, all his, you know, his cousins had sent him flags for his dorm room. So I basically removed all of the childhood things yeah. and converted to a semi dorm wow. room in his bedroom. Well, he almost had an absolute fit. And I'm looking at him confused. And he said, this is my childhood. This is my bedroom. And I realized at that moment, what family means to me is this is, you know, we love being around each other. We love as a family being together. And for him, the sense of closeness with us. And, and again, you get it because you have two beautiful daughters. Um, you know, family to us is just being connected and just very simply loving each other and hanging out and enjoying each other's company. So for him, college didn't belong in that bedroom. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, that's very yeah. great example. Yeah. Though, but it, it started from a great place on your heart yeah. too. So, but you got the confirmation that he wants you. So we love, love unconditional yes. from the son to the mother. We love a lot. And to the father. That's what we do, yeah. right? Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. So, this is a great blend. I want to have you try something. So we're going to have to finish unless we get a little um, a, spittoon. a little spittoon, which yeah. we will. So I want you to try and give me your thought Love because to. you're not new in the wine world because how many years have you been collecting fine wines? Oh, a long time. You've always yeah. drank wine, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So it depends on our answer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this wine is interesting and we wanted to pair it with Rio because it's actually the perfect field blend in the old tradition. And mm -hmm. Philippe, mm -hmm. who helps us on this wine as well, you know, mm -hmm. he consults with us at Raymond Vineyards. The idea was to make a field blend in its true sense of definition. Oh. A field blend in the sense that you co-ferment Thank you so much. You co-ferment. Typically, our guests finish their glasses, but you know, you know this wine well. So. This, is, this is unusual for Christine. That was a heavy pour. I've glass. never yeah, seen exactly. her not finish her glass. So delicious. Thank you. Typically, she finishes out of the bottle, but we'll make an exception yeah. today. Yeah. So this is one and a half acre, all co-fermented together. Mm -hmm. Cabernet, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Malbec, uh -huh. Petit Verdot. Yeah. Wow. So leather label. Wow. Because yes. it's all about biodynamic yeah. farming. Uh -huh. It's certified as such. And I thought you would be interested in that because I want to ask you, you're very committed to obviously the environment in many fronts. As an Irish, mm -hmm. very much so. Mm -hmm. As an East Coast man, yeah. Pennsylvania, one of the most beautiful states in the country. So this is biodynamic farming. Yeah. 
What is your philosophy at Brandt at this stage in farming? You know, we've we've always farmed organically. I mean, that was very important to us. Mm -hmm. We we were always, you know, skeptical on biodynamic, and we never did it on our previous vineyards. But when we went to Brand, you know, we felt that to get to the next level, we had to learn more and go deeper. Yeah, and, and you know, we biodynamic. A lot of people think it's a lot of hoo ha and you know the moon and the stars and yeah. sun and it doesn't mean anything but you know when we talk to a number of people in fact we talked to your biodynamic consultant yeah. at your 50th birthday yeah. that's right and, yeah we did uh, yeah. yeah and you know we i hope you they brought energy to you they did bring they energy. did they did they brought your passion actually because yeah. we right. talked a yeah. lot about how you feel very passionate about it for yeah. sure yeah. yeah but when it came time to figure out you know I don't want to digress too much, but when we first met Philippe and we bought brand, we yeah. purchased the brand, we said, Philippe, you make, you know, brand makes 97, 98 point wines consistently. You know, what are the handful of things to get to a hundred? And he said, it's not a handful of things. It's a thousand things. <laughs> That's and right. so we said, the devil is in the details. Yeah, exactly. Next step. And, and we've so checked we off said, about 950 of those right good. here. Good. Yeah, Philippe's so getting nervous right left. now. No, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But biodynamic was one of the things because when we spoke to people that had, you know, done biodynamic farming and practices, you know, it, it really boiled down to, you know, the earth is alive above ground. Yes. But biodynamic brings it to life below ground. And that really well resonated said. with us. As uh, above, so below. And we've only <laughs> been farming the brand vineyards for, t for two years now, yeah. but we've seen a remarkable difference. Mm -hmm. in, That's great. In so yeah. we are true believers yeah. and, yes, and you inspired us. Well, you're very kind, but yeah. it's exciting because our friends, key leaders at Apple as a company, tech, you know, you make this fabulous thing and everything else tied together. And to recognize that is very important because, you know, I don't know what you think, but I feel we should all be organic and biodynamic. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it's feasible. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's feasible because of climate conditions, right. because of everything we have here in this Napa Valley that is a dreamland, we should do it. Right. And I want to raise my glass right. to this. Cheers. Cheers. So why don't you... This is very exciting. Well, love, let's describe this wine. Yeah. You take the lead, but describe it maybe in very technical Apple computer terms. <laughs> Tell us, reveal us the secret of the two trillion dollar company. I hope you still have a lot of stock, by the way. <laughs> of course we do. It may be more valuable than any wine stocks in the world. I hate to say that. <laughs> it was interesting on the nose initially. There's, I could smell the Merlot, which is mm -hmm. quite prominent on the nose. Yep. Um, it's. And what was the you have? It's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's your technical term. So, <laughs> besides your beautiful wife, yeah. describe your passion. You know, because I know you have a lot. We have a lot of passions, and share with us. I think that, you know one of our shared passions. I mean, aside from our relationship, our family, our friends, is we love we like we love being uncomfortable. We love learning. We love putting ourselves out there, taking risks. And I think what that equates to is, you know, we don't like the status quo, <laughs> you know, and maybe that wasn't always, I think it was in our DNA, but we mm -hmm. didn't know it. And, you know, I hope our friends heard you. We like being uncomfortable. And I love this because I always preach, allow the uncomfortable to be present, mm -hmm. to be at the tangent of the circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love that. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but this is so good. And we think every every industry, every um, environment needs something that pushes it forward. Yeah. And and you do that for the wine industry. There's been very few people in the history of the wine industry that have really pushed it forward. And you're going to be one of those people. Yeah. Mm, but we thank you, whether it's good or not. <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted to be a part of that. We. You know, there's amazing traditions in the wine industry, but there's also things that we think can evolve. Yeah. And um, we have a passion to be a part of that. And we think we can play our part. We're, we're not always in front of a camera or out in front, but we, you know, we think we can do a lot of things to influence yeah. 
Um, and our passion is to do that. And we, you know, it was funny when, when I joined Apple in 1998, the company was almost bankrupt and Steve, it was falling off a cliff and, and it was, nobody remembers those days, but I left a very successful company to go there and people said, are you crazy? Yeah. And then I left in 2017 when, you know, it was just a rocket ship and people said, again, are you crazy? And so if people keep asking us that question, we know we're making the right decisions because we're leaving our comfort zone and we're taking on something new that's a challenge. Yeah. And, you know, we, we had to ask ourselves when our kids were getting ready to leave and go off to college, what are we, what's our next, what's our next thing we're going to do? And we, like you said, never work together, truly work together. Yeah. And so this was, you know, a real test of, of our, you know, partnership to, to do this together. And so I, we're, I think I did hear him one evening leave the winery saying, I am crazy. He <laughs> spent time with me, but I think that might have been related to me maybe on that particular day. But, um, you know, I would, I, you said that beautifully. Yes. Um, and, and I would like to ask again in a different way, and you said it amazingly, of course, um, what is taking risk? What is being crazy? Mm-hmm. And why is it so important to be? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I partake. Mm-hmm. in yep. this approach because I think it's many standard deviation away that we can really become who we meant to become. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I love that you said that because I loved my career at Apple, but I didn't believe that was the only thing I was supposed yeah. to do. Having our family was um, a very important part of sure. that, but we still felt as we looked at going to to purchase brand, you know, are we ready for this? and it was like anything else in life. It's like, of course we're not, so let's do it. Um, and you know, the wonderful part for us was as we've gone along in our journey together, we've realized happiness isn't about, you know, the dollars that come out of this or the, um, you know, if we, if we hit our numbers every month, which we are very focused on, obviously, mm. but you know, we truly, we believe we're deeds, not words. Mm-hmm. And we feel that we, we hear a lot of people saying words and we don't see anything behind them That's right. a lot of the time. And we believe the way we're going to make a difference in the Napa Valley yeah. in, is to learn every part of our business. We're very hands on, you know, if, if bottling is happening, we're like, can we help? And what do you mean? Can you help? I'd them? love to see you pushing you know? the corks, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe putting the capsule in, the um, or may, laying the bottle on the mattress and putting a label on. Oh, there was no mattress. I'm have a... that. It's not clear to me that I did the right bottling maybe. versus what happens at your winery. But... What happens? <laughs> but what I so this would be another situation of being in your uncomfort zone, <laughs> being open to maybe I'm doing, you know, doing it differently at brand, but but. But yeah, seriously, it's uh, it's very important for us. We feel we're we had one more yeah. great thing in us to do. Well, we I, feel, I, well, we one that. you 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 way too modest. I think there's many more in that energy that I feel than just one. But yeah. For now, this is this one, Christine. You make me think. Do you believe in destiny? Um. Hmm. That's an interesting. Because question. it seems that the path you yeah. just described. Yeah. From your life to Ireland yeah. to the bar yeah. to re-entering Apple to yeah. the wine world, it seems that it was meant to happen. I'm not sure if you asked me that question without certain things happening in my life, I might have said, oh, I'm not so sure I do. Yes. In retrospect, as I look back, things happened in a way that they were meant to happen. Mm-hmm. As an example, when I came to the US first, I mentioned I worked for a company and then chose yeah. to uh, to go work at Apple and I felt I negotiated a wonderful deal to go back and work for them and I was so proud of myself and I got everything I asked for and the little print, the fine print at the end of my offer letter said subject to green card and I thought yeah, this is going to be difficult to get but yet two weeks later I got one in the lottery. Wow. And it if was, it's not fate. So, <laughs> right. That's um, amazing. Did you play the lotto too at the same time? I did and had no results. Maybe, maybe <laughs> we had, share the numbers and we share had, the results. I had 
I've had no result. But, you know, again, I think we learn from our parents. We learn from the way we've yes. been brought up. And what we learned was, I think, in their day, they were far less risk adverse because they had so much to lose and not as much opportunity. I think it behooves us to take advantage of the opportunities yeah. we have. And I think I'd be really disappointed in my life if I look back and and left a lot of lost opportunities sitting there to not take advantage. Well said. How would you recommend to all our viewers to take risk? Um, there's an important question we always ask. Yeah. So when, when I say we take a risk, we don't just fly off the edge of the cliff and assume that there'll be something there to catch us. We ask some really important questions. And the most important question that we, I think, ask on everything we do is why. Yes, great. And great I advice. feel if you're taking a risk, the most important question is why? Why are we doing this? Yes. Why is it this way? Why did you choose that direction? Why do we have to? We, we apply mm -hmm. this question to mm -hmm. everything we do. Mm -hmm. And I feel out of that question yes. will come key questions that you will ask yourself. So therefore your risk is mitigated somewhat with a lot of you know, data that will be back. And how do you force yourself, both of you, to be honest with your answers? Because I find as an entrepreneur that you are, that I'm sometimes, you know, it's very easy to deviate yep. on the outcome of the answer to that question and yeah. you lean it towards the outcome you wish to hear within your own <laughs> self. <laughs> so is it great as a couple that you play the check and balance role maybe? Or, you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we hold each other accountable. Yeah, that's that's the key. We're, we're very different. And so depending on what, what the question is, we, we take turns and yeah. it's an interesting dynamic. I can't explain it, yeah. but it's, yeah. it works. But but you have it and it works and you make mm -hmm. sure that it is that honest why answer. Well, I think at the end of the day, there is a level of trust because yes. you'll never have the full answer. So anybody taking a risk, I don't want somebody to, to assume that you're going to get 100% of what you're going to get. You're not. Um, so it's like anything in life. You're hoping that you do some homework and the rest will be... What does your heart feel? What does your head feel? And sometimes it yeah. won't make sense and you dive. Um, I think we're lucky because we can play off each other in the sense of we really play the devil's advocate a lot. Um, we try and be open minded so that we don't force an opinion. And then we try to be like you. We try to be very humble. Oh, no, that's not you. That's not <laughs> <laughs> so I think... <laughs> Sorry, it was Jim. <laughs> I'm spanking. That actually feels pretty good. <laughs> um, we try to be, uh, I can't say we're, I can't say we do this all the time. I don't, I, we well, try and do the right thing. Well, I, I think you said it well. I think there's three things that make a decision. Yes. One is your head, one is your heart, and one is your gut. And some days your head and your heart are very at odds with things. So your gut has to be that 1% that makes the decision for you. Mm. I think that's another fantastic advice for everyone. However, if you're buying a winery, there's a fourth. It's your wallet. That's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a different story. But uh... And there's an old saying, you start with a big yeah. one, right? You'd yeah. better, specifically on Pritchard Hill. Yeah. So talking about Pritchard Hill, this is... So this is Amazing. our proprietary blend, it's 2017. Um, this comes, so Jim mentioned we have, you know, 110 mm -hmm. acre estate. We have three elevations of vineyards, 1200 feet, 1300 feet, and 1400 feet. Our Cabernet Franc is predominantly grown in our middle vineyard at 1400 feet. It's bowl shaped. It's beautiful soil, red soil. This is a you know, it's it's relatively cool in that vineyard we, because we overlook Lake Hennessy. So we have that cool yeah. um, influence coming in there of the climate. It's our, it's hand harvested, you know, hand picked, basically our best barrels, 65% Cabernet Franc, 35% um, Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's a beautiful, elegant wine, which did, play a role in our purchase yeah. of brand because I'm a fan of um, it's, it's really beautiful. Yeah. And that's the one I know the most. Yeah. In fact, I'm I'm a absolute lover of Cabernet Franc. Mm -hmm. 
And for all of you listening with us tonight, I think what is exciting is to allow yourself to discover cap phone, which is really the top gun. That's the secret mm -hmm. weapon of all right bank. Mm -hmm. And of mm -hmm. course, some of it mm -hmm. elsewhere. And I think this is the essence of what could become the future of Napa Valley in many ways. Well, we're, we're very fortunate on Pritchard Hill because we actually believe that our Cab Franc is equal to our Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, we make four wines and we have 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, which is our one of our, in our flagship wine. But this is a beautiful, elegant wine. As I say, 65% Cabernet Franc. With, with the beauty of the Cab Franc, then you get the intensity and the yeah. lift of the Cabernet Sauvignon. So 35% Cabernet Sauvignon, which is really beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, people are, it's kind of our cult wine, would you say? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think people are surprised. It. Yeah. You know, it, as growers on the Valley Floor, we couldn't get this level of Cab Franc, this quality. And mm -hmm. like we said, we, we love it and we tried. Yeah. And we just have the perfect growing conditions. And we went, we went to the right bank just re recently and we went to a number of first growth wineries mm -hmm. and we talked to the the vintners and the winemakers and it's with global warming it's increasingly more difficult to find the right conditions yeah. and so we feel really blessed to have a Cabernet Franc of this. And that's the dream combination yeah. is Napa Valley. Yeah. So now let's go back to technology. <laughs> you know wine do we have to? <laughs> well, I think what would be great for everyone, and I'm sure everybody's bursting to ask this question in the chat is, where do you see the future of technology to the continued contribution to life at large and maybe wine? Mm -hmm. So two questions in one, because obviously, and I mean that in the sense mm -hmm. that Apple is very much qualified as a health company as well. Mm -hmm. and, is moving into all those channels that are phenomenal for all of us, mm -hmm. you know, from measuring your own health mm -hmm. to everything else. So give us maybe a little bit of a technology talk. So mm -hmm. we'll bring to wine finally, mm -hmm. you know, a few minutes after, but. Do you, I, I can jump, you, you go well, ahead. I'll answer the wine question. Yeah. Maybe you can talk sure. about the life question, but you know, the wine industry, you know, I think when we came, people asked us, well, you're going to bring technology into how you make your wine. Yes. And, you know, wine is an art, as you know, it, it's an art and a science mm -hmm. and technology has its place there, but there's also traditions and a lot of knowledge over the years. And we're trying to find the perfect blend of those things. So we're not over, you know, if you come to our winery, it's not overly stuffed with technology and digital this and you can do something from your app at home and it's a very it's a very people present thing okay you know you can you, know, you can do a pump over from your house from your app and just you know be sipping a you know margarita in your backyard but it's not the same as when you're there and you're opening the vat and you're smelling and you're mm -hmm. just making sure everything is perfect and you know so there's there's in in wine there's a place for technology especially in a vineyard yes you know, as as mother nature and global warming make things more challenging you know that's where i think technology really adds but in the winemaking we still think there's a lot of tradition mm -hmm. and a lot of the old world things really make a lot of sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well said so you still believe in the human touch and the it's very important. Absolutely. Yes. That are yeah. not technology driven yeah. or yeah. the technology of the human body. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, what's really interesting, I think when we brought brand, people had this idea, oh, there'll be, you know, all of these really cool gadgets that will be around the winery. And we sat back and really thought, what did we learn from our previous life? What was the mm -hmm. most important oh, thing yeah. for us to bring to brand? And ironically, one of the most important things to bring to brand were the concepts we learned. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily the end result of the digital you know, format of whatever yes. it was that we developed. It was mm -hmm. the concept. It was how we could think and how we would ask questions and how we would say, do you know, Steve always said at Apple, you have to say no to a thousand things to say yes to one of the right things. Hmm. So we would constantly relay that sort of messaging around, yeah, there's so many things we can do, but is it the right thing to do? Yeah. So we started in this past, you know, 18 to 20 months to really apply those concepts around where do we 
spend our time, spend our money, spend our, you know, our, our energy. brain power and energy, yes. basically. And now, of course, I couldn't stop but wonder when there was a group of cars with winemakers hopping out of the back of the cars going into the winery, looking at the new laser um, sort of, sort of, sort of, of table. So that, that we had because you know, we it couldn't looks resist. like a massage parlor bed. You put a coin. <laughs> right. Motel Six had it yeah. way before that. So we couldn't resist. You put a coin, it shakes. When I was 16, 18, checking to a hotel, it was very useful. So, you know, we couldn't resist bringing some technology like that in. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm cherishing to that, but, you know, I am. Um, I, I, and we should always drink on a chair. Uh, exactly, and look at each other in the eye because you know you just got in trouble right now. Let's do it again so exactly. you don't get punished yeah. by the Your Highness who is looking at us. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. It sounds like being at Angelus in France right? oh, when the bell goes at six. That's it. It's Hallelujah. all crystal for you. Yeah. You know, crystal Baccarat glasses. Beautiful. You know, Gorgeous. handmade with no technology, no laser, the yeah. technology all by hand. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Can you believe they've been doing the same thing since 17? 64 and Amazing. the it. art yeah, of savoir faire, right? It's beautiful. beautiful. I know we have another great crystal maker in yeah. Ireland. <laughs> yes, you do. But um, this That's is gorgeous. But your wine is phenomenal and transcendental, and I think it keeps going. Dear friends, we will save the Zinfandel for later because yeah. it's great to have an Apple Valley Zin, but after this lineup, we should have done it the other way around. As we're going to have dinner and maybe other things. Yeah. We'll have the Zinfandel with the spice. And, 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 and you give yeah. us the opportunity to give you the technical answer to of your wine, which you didn't do. So unlike Jean-Charles to not let you finish your... Uh, well, I have some questions for Jean-Charles yeah. too. Yeah. 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 But we'll get to those later. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to finish, because I think you asked a great question around, um, you know, the digital world. You know, we, we are very focused on... Um, and Jim puts it very well, which are three things at the winery, yeah. which is the place, the product and the people. We know that we have the place. It's sensational. Mm -hmm. And we're creating a wonderful sense of place, which will basically permeate through everything that we yeah. do. It's a gorgeous um, winery designed by Juan Carlos Fernandez, who's a local architect and the previous owners. Whoever is called Juan Carlos is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the Spanish version of John Charles. Well, so, you know, so, JC. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. John Charles That's Fernandez. True. Um, <laughs> and. Felicitaciones. Merci. And at that. For, so when we went to, to Brandt, we thought, well, what else can we do here? It's yeah. just beautifully done. And what we felt is we could bring some final touches on the interiors of the estate. So we brought, you know, the wonderful Erin Martin and her team. Great. In. And uh, we really wanted to work with a lot of local artists and really have, you know, from the outside, brand is very understated because uh, Juan Carlos says his vision was really to have, to you know, in. to blend in and have nature be part of the beauty of it. And um, Erin just brought a, you know, complemented that beautifully from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, dear friends, you're going to be able to purchase brand through brand themselves yes. or brandnapavalley.com. And the Oakville wine merchant is obviously promoting brand with a lot of love, a lot of passion. But I have one last question for our friends before we go. And I know it's been almost an hour together. It has been so much fun. Are you serious? I could be with them for five, which we've done before. Yes, we have. <laughs> so now you've done all those things in your life. Mm -hmm. What's your next dream? I know it's a big one. But we have to finish with this. You've given us advice. You've inspired us tonight. You've given us an amazing path of risk-taking ideas, going at the tangent of the circle, mm -hmm. being all those beautiful things you've said. What is your dream? It could be society. It could be ideological. Yeah, sure. It could be religious. It could be anything you want. Well, could I, be. Christine said earlier we want to try to influence what's going on in the wine industry mm -hmm. and even though we're a small winery we still think we can do that yeah. but there's bigger things in the world that need to be solved and they need smart people and engaged people to do it and you know there's a lot of causes out mm -hmm. there and you know we've been very very focused on a couple of those and so tell us about those so 
we think climate change is a very big huge problem yeah. and it's not being taken seriously and it's not being addressed yeah but as farmers we see it every day and we see the challenges um, but we also see other things that are hugely important like education and, mm -hmm. and so you know not enough people step back and say I've been successful so how do I give back and how do I you know a lot of people say I've been successful so let me just keep being successful or making more money or whatever and we really want to balance that because you know we, we both come from very humble backgrounds and you know, we feel very fortunate mm -hmm. to be where we're at and have an amazing family that we have and we want to make a difference in other ways mm -hmm. and so we're we're getting involved in a lot of things mm -hmm. that's so, great yeah. and before when i left apple one of the things i really felt that was important was to not lose our reach into um technology and innovation so we started um our own family venture fund mm. and we're you know we've got about 20 companies on our portfolio wow. and that's really important to us because mm -hmm. It is companies who are doing things to really change things in the world. Mm -hmm. That that products that can help people in third world countries or wherever. So again, we really feel innovation is really important to us. It keeps your brain alert. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we need to care about beyond just where we are. We totally care about this community, which is by the way why yeah. we bought a winery as you well know yes. there's less than 400 wineries in the Napa Valley with about 3,500 <coughs> labels yeah. so we really felt we wanted to invest in the community and be part of this community and I would leave you with if you ask me in 20 if you ask me in 40 years um, we'll be around <laughs> yes let's what, make it 400 okay, years because 400 I know we'll years. still be here yeah, we'll meet again um, you know what what is one takeaway that was important it would be that that you know, that I, that we made a difference in somebody's yeah. life. And I think that would be the greatest honor of all would be to say that we, in a positive way, <laughs> I hope not a negative way, but we made a positive difference yeah. in somebody's life. That's just very important mm -hmm. to, to who we are. Dear friends, Christine, Jim, what else to say after this amazing final statement? First, we want to thank you for coming to Napa Valley thank you for, for many years. Us. For having it's us. It's an honor. For making the big step of investing in Napa Valley with a great, incredible winery brand, for being who you are as an individual, as a couple, as a family, as an amazing community influencer, and, and for being the amazing person that you are. Thank you. And thank you for being on live because everybody now will get to know who yeah. is behind those incredible wines. So, to friendship. Thank you so much. To your great influence, your passion, your love, and your charisma. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.